just come out here. Last time on True Magnum TV. Okay, settle. If Kirk would have missed, it might have been over. But he totally redeemed himself. <laughs> the zebra jinx is off. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can't do what I do at half speed. It's not an option. I think we're off to a good start here, but I'm realizing that there's a long road between here and the mountains of Russia. All right. Yep. It's just great when everything comes together and that kind of icing on the cake. You know, you just hope for a nice representative of the species, and this is beyond that. Hunting season has begun. And these men will put it all on the line for the hunts of a lifetime. This is True Magnum TV. True Magnum TV is proudly presented by Western Powders, premium shooting and gun care products. In Zimbabwe, after getting both a Cape Buffalo and a Zebra, Rob and his team are on the final day of their African safari. It's been a hell of a safari so far, but it's not over yet. That's the beautiful thing about hunting in Africa. Mixed bag, extreme. Multiple species, you can hunt right to your last day. Deep within the woodlands and grassy plains, the team battles the heat so that their client, Kirk, can get his last savanna prize. It only starts warming up when we start walking every time. This safari for Kirk was basically about two things, buffalo and sable. And we find ourselves in the heart of some of the best sable country in all of Africa. The Royal Sable, named for having the longest horns of all the antelope. This woodland creature is considered the most beautiful of its subspecies. And for this, finds its way on the top of many trophy hunters lists in Africa. Kirk has the last permit for sable for the whole year in all the Matetsi areas. So we're not going to take an average trophy. These areas are very, very well managed and they want the oldest, biggest bulls taken out and nothing else. Kirk is lucky to have the final sable tag of the year, but the changing winds of the savanna can hinder the chances of a successful hunt. It's hot and dry. Everything's noisy, but it's windy and that's going to cause us some problems. Sable. There's about a dozen of them single file and we're trying to get around the wind and get set up for them to come by, see if there's a good bull in there for Kirk. In Tajikistan, after a successful Markhor hunt, Bo Morgan and his team are taking the next week to research a new animal for their program, the Asian ibex. These ibex are a different kind of animal. They're kind of a rare thing. They haven't been uh, hunted very much. We think they're a different subspecies and we need to do some research. So we really need to get one shot, get it killed. It'll help the program get going this part of the world. This scouting expedition is also an opportunity for Bo to be on trigger. No matter how many times you do it, we've been to the dance so many times ourselves, but when you're the hunter, you get these butterflies. Oh, we see something big. I'm guiding all the time, like 300 days a year. I don't get to hunt much myself anymore, so it's a pretty good opportunity for me. Uh, I'm really looking forward to being able to shoot one myself. The Asian Ibex is a large, heavy-built goat that lives in high elevations over 16,000 feet. Both male and female Ibex have circular rings around their horns. A fully grown male's horns can measure between 45 to 58 inches in length. Finding a male in this class would give Bo the information he needs to extend his hunting program in the area. After a one hour hike up the mountain, the team spots some Ibex high on the cliffside. I think they're, what they look like they're doing across that valley, and the feed is the same as this mountain here. So they'll probably feed up it. So you know, another two hours and then bed. If they feed all the way to the ridge, it's a problem. If they don't, then we'll make our way around the edge and see if we can locate them. We have to go slowly here. Smatri, Hunting these skilled climbers is not for the faint of heart. It requires not only being in good physical condition, 
but also a rifle capable of making a long-range shot. Hunting ibex are a little more challenging than uh, hunting these markhor. They live at higher elevations, it makes the air a little bit thinner, and the higher you go chasing these things, the harder it is. Teamwork's an absolute must in this part of the country to keep you safe. Make sure they're not coming flat across the mountain. I believe they're gonna climb and feed. So I'll be here, everybody's just checking. Because we're blind, we don't know where they went. If they went low, if they went high. So the wind changes, we have to go quickly up the valley get past the thermals right now it's bad but if it changes we gotta go past wind or no wind before Bo and the team can make their move they must first wait to get the report from the local guide well he looked back in that valley he can't see in there couldn't pick him up so we're gonna keep continuing to assume that they went up over the top into that next valley we're looking at so the wind's changing on us now I think we're gonna get past so we're the wind's in the right direction with any luck, we'll see this ibex when we top out in the canyon. True Magnum TV is brought to you by Cooper Firearms of Montana. Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. Everly Stock, go in light, come out heavy. Dunham's, the hunting adventure company. Global Rescue. And by Jonas Brothers Taxidermy Studios of New York. In Zimbabwe, Rob Dunham and his team are on the trail of the final target, the sable, on the great plains of the savannah. The Matetsi Safari area is where we are hunting, adjacent to the national park, are world famous and best known for some of the biggest sable in all of Africa. There they are. They're about 75 yards out behind the big tree here. Rob's client, Kirk, nabbed the last sable tag of the season and has only one day left to get his bull. And we're seeing good bulls, bulls that most guys would take. But because these are a very special animal and limited quota, we're looking for the oldest, best bull we can find. The last one on the right, Kirk. The last one on the back and the right. It's a big bull. Back and right. They all look really good until you see a big one and then you know exactly what they're supposed to look like. There's lots of bush between us. He's moved now. And after glassing for 15 minutes or so, boom, out he comes. There he is. This is a sable worthy of filling Kirk's tag. Now, with the sable in their sights, Kirk and his team must push forward if they're going to have any chance at a shot. There might have been over 50 animals in that herd. That's a lot of eyeballs. You don't want a big crew going up there. I left it to Fidelis our head tracker and Kirk to go up on their own and try and set up for a shot. My relationship with Fidelis goes back probably 15 years. I've hunted three different African countries with them, South Africa, Tanzania, and Zimbabwe. Fidelis is a great partner to have on the ground. He worked for national parks for years. I trust him, he's trusted by everyone, and he gets stuff done. I got confidence in my crew. I knew I was protected, I had good cover, and I watched them sneaking in and out all the way, trying to close the gap on that big old sable bull. In Montana, one month after his knee surgery, James Bryan has a short five-month window before he heads to the Caucasus Mountains of Russia. For James, every day counts on his road to recovery, but it hasn't been easy. PT's never fun, you know? It's, it's a lonely deal. Every morning, at least once a day, you're up early, filling up with coffee, coming into this place before anybody else, and fortunately, everybody here is pretty fun, and, and that makes it not so bad. Hey, James. Hey. How's it going? Pretty good. Good. You ready today? I'm hoping so. Yeah? How's it been feeling? Good. Pretty good? Yeah, okay. everything's been going well. I'm hoping to ditch these crutches today. Yeah. 
Today we're eliminating James's crutches. Uh, this is a pretty big step for most people. Uh, it takes a lot of confidence to be able to get rid of those crutches and take the first steps. We're going to take away one crutch to start. It's going to be actually this one. So you're going to walk forward, putting weight through your right foot, just as comfortable, and then pushing through the crutch um, to help yourself along. So it's still a little bit of pressure. Dumping the crutches is a big milestone. It means I can put weight on my leg and we can really ramp this thing up. You know, PT is not fun. You know, it's, it's little tiny increments of gain every single day that are almost not even measurable. I mean, it's, it's a mental test to, to do that every single day, just like sheep hunting is, climbing a mountain. Just putting one step in front of another, in front of another. Pretty soon you get to the top. Um, try to put a little bit less weight through the crutch. You'd be amazed how quickly those muscles will start firing again. Right now it feels like I'm walking on a stump that doesn't know how to, it's like the muscle bar. Although James is eager to get things rolling, there's still a long road ahead to recovery. He's now able to put full weight through his knee uh, as he's walking and we'll have to work a little bit on retraining his gait pattern as he's likely developed some abnormal patterns that we want to eliminate before uh, he returns to normal activities. Which can be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing for James. I have a feeling I'm going to have to slow him down because at this point he's going to start feeling a little bit more like a normal person and he'll think he's able to do things that he really shouldn't be doing. If James isn't careful, he could potentially cause more harm than good, which means having to cancel his upcoming hunt. If I told you I wasn't worried at all, I'd be lying. You know, I realize this is a tough hunt. It's the Caucasus Mountains. It's Kubantur, the final exam for a sheep hunter. We're going to be in some garbage. Like, this terrain is tough. I know it, but it's too late now. I can't turn back. I made a commitment to a client. I got to be there. And uh, it is what it is. We'll make the best of it. In Tajikistan, high in the mountains, Bo Morgan is enduring a brutal trek through Ibex country, and the thinning air is starting to take its toll. Climbing these elevations isn't easy. The higher we go, the harder it is to breathe. We have to let our bodies adjust. We really have to take our time. Although the elevation is hard on humans, there are other deadly predators that call it home. We don't need very bad viper in these little cracks while we're hiking. Sure. He's probably sleeping though, so. Yeah, but he won't. He won't today. Look at that, right? Oh, scary. Now I'm watching for vipers and not watching for ibex. You never know what you're going to find out here. You have to stay focused, concentrate all the time. Falling's not the only thing that'll kill you. If uh, somebody gets hurt or injured or worse, our hunt's over. For the past three hours, Bo has been hoping to spot a monster ibex. He needs an exceptional bull for continued research of the area and hopefully a new addition to his hunting program. I thought we saw them up higher here. Maybe right there, huh? Yeah, maybe right there. There they are. We'll have to save no problem. Climbing to the high top of the ridge, Bo may have found the ibex he was looking for. The only problem now, Bo and his team are too high to make the shot. Yes, yes, yes. When you think it's really hard going up, there's nothing like coming down. With rocks and ice and sliding, nothing to hold on to. And we're making a lot of noise. If the Ibex don't hear us, it's going to be a miracle. A little hairy, huh? Everybody else 
else to do it. Now it's my turn. Yes, 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 yes. True Magnum TV is brought to you by TrueMagnum.com. In Tajikistan, after climbing for hours through the rocks and snow, Bo Morgan has his sights on a trophy ibex. Don't speak. Just one ball. The snow. Shoot through the... The snow. You want Yes? They will come up. Be ready, Bo. I'm holding it up in you the You think air. you got it? It's a big one. You shot a fantastic one. Be ready, Bo. Come up across. Look at the snow here. Look at the... Look at my bullet, Renault. Yes. In the snow, my bullet here. Right here, Renault. Yes, yes, but that is nothing. No, no, right I there. The line. I'm clear. There's a line. I clear. see the snow here. But that is nothing. If you were you were you were okay. Huh? It's good. Boom. Yes. But so he started you, to move, you hit so me. I knew. Probably he's dead and so they're waiting around. It's often. Don't move because he's dead. So they say okay. He was uh, the chief of the herd, so they are around now, maybe behind. Renault thinks that I hit it. I'm not so sure. A lot of factors going on, heads bobbing, people moving, rushed. In this kind of terrain, if it's a bad hit, it could turn out really bad. I don't like super clean things. I like it when it's clean. That was not clean. Mm -hmm. Yes, but uh, hunting is hunting, Bo. Have a good chance. This year, we are free. Should we climb to there and then have one guy go look, check blood? Now the guides must trail the ibex and check for blood. Wounded and lost animals are considered a killed animal, and a hunt ended. The team is mad. Ah, oh, yes. Uh, I go with the team's mad, and I don't blame them. Nobody wants to deal with a miss, worse yet, a hit, and not, not a recovery. Big effort for maybe. <laughs> if it is that, and we can't find them, what I need to expand this program at Tajik is not there, and I don't have a program. Want to try? Next time on True Magnum TV. Because the time. Now Fidelis and the boys start panicking a little bit because they're going to lose their opportunity. Is it? Okay, okay. Which, bo which boy is it? You see that one? The far one. This side. You know, I realize nobody's going to give me the sign off to go on this hunt just yet. But it's how I make my living. It's my livelihood. You have to shoot. He's perfect now. Join me. Get so stupid for me, I say. You stop. He's coming.